sure to check out agelsgeeks.com for your figures and collectibles. And before we continue with the video, just need to give a big shout out and thank you to Andrew from GI Studios com for making me all these awesome daredevil 19 pictures thanks dude appreciate it be sure to check out his work he does some great uh comic stuff that he's working on he also did help that uh the the guy who makes the gladiator figures as ray studios he helped to make the backgrounds for those gladiator figures so be sure to check out his work i will put the link to his website in the description below and i also did put up some new merch with some of these awesome logos and pics up there along with some other stuff so if you want to check that out that link will be in the description as well yeah my chair randomly does that yeah all right, so what is going on, everybody? Daredevil 18 here, back at it with another video. And in this video, I decided to do something I never done a list of. And this is going to be a list of what I think are some of the best figure companies around as of right now, this day, today, this day, right now, yes. <laughs> so I got five figure companies that I'm going to throw on this list five of them. I'm not going to do an honorable mention. These figures that I put on my list are figures I have the most fun with posing around, posing uh, display options, stuff like that. So this is why they made my list because they are a fun action figure. Action figures should be fun to pose around and have fun with, you know what I mean? So I'm not going to throw a figure company on here just because... Maybe they're cheaper, or uh, maybe they're more well-known or something. You know, I'm not just going to throw them on there just for the hell of it. I'm throwing them on here because these are figures I, I genu genuinely have fun posing around, taking pictures of, and so on. You know, so let's get into the list and start it off with number five. And the first figure company coming in at number five is Mezco 112 Collective. Now, these figures, not the most posable figures, but they do have a good, a, a, a good amount of articulation to have fun posing them around, but what I think really makes them fun is all of the accessories. Like, when Mezco releases a figure and there's not many accessories, I get pretty let down by that, because to me... With all the accessories they include with their figures, like Blade here, or their Batman figures, for example, there are so many different display options you could do with these guys. Like I said, their po posing isn't top tier, you know what I mean? Like uh, Amazing Yamaguchi or something like that, but combining their articulation with their accessories makes the figure a lot more fun. So I, I, I had to put Mezco on this list just because... I have lots of fun posing their figures, mainly because of their accessories. Their articulation, like I said, is decent, but like I've been saying, with their accessories, they make their figures a whole ton of fun. So Mezco Toys with their Mezco 112 line comes in at number five. Now coming in at number four. All right, and coming in at number four is an extremely highly posable figure and that is real tech and their amazing yamaguchi line these are probably some of the best articulated figures around right now these figures you can get them into any damn pose you want to get them into like look at this pose i got all might into classic uh punching all might pose there he had a little bit of dust on him but you can get these guys in some really great poses. Certain things I don't like about Amazing Yamaguchi, though, why I didn't put them higher on my list is because every time I get a figure from them, I get either loose joints or um, or you might find paint flaws here and there. They're getting better, though, with the paint flaws. Their loose joints, though, is something that's very irritating because when you have such a highly posable, articulated figure like this, when you have a loose joint, like say my, my Deku has a super loose uh, upper thigh swivel on the left leg, I can't get him in certain poses now because of that. So uh, you do need to tighten up certain joints. Like All Might has a loose joint somewhere. I don't remember where it is though. But that, that, that is a negative thing about the line. But these figures are just extremely fun to pose around. You'll be posing them for hours. <laughs> 
I mean, that could also be a good and a bad thing depending on what you're doing the posing for. Like for me, for example, whenever I review like a Mafex figure compared to an Amazing Amaguchi figure, the posing session usually maybe takes an hour for like Mafex figure arts or any other figure. Amazing Amaguchi always takes double the time. It does take more time to pose them and to know how to learn uh, how to figure out how to use their joints this is more for like a, a veteran action figure collector if you're not well known with articulated figures or you're just new to collecting articulated figures i wouldn't recommend picking these up yet i mean you can to start giving yourself an idea of how the line is but i i feel like this is for a more advanced action figure collector because their joint system is a bit different compared to other uh, are articulated figures, but yeah, man, I definitely had to throw uh, Revolt Tech Amazing Yamaguchi on this list because they, they are super fun figures to pose around, so that's my number four. Now coming in at number three. All right, so number three here might not be, some of their figures aren't as highly articulated as Amazing Yamaguchi. Sometimes some of them are. Sometimes some of them are horrible with articulation. It's with this line here, it, they have their ups and downs, but their quality is is so on point. I had to put them in the top three. They deserved it. I've only had two breaks with this company. Mezco, I had a, a few wrist joints break or, or accessories. Uh, Revol Tech, I had a few figures break on me as well. SH Fig Yards, I've only had one wrist joint break, and then I had Harley Quinn's uh, The Suicide Squad. Her bat, the peg on that, broke. That's all that's ever broke on me with an SH Fig Yards. I never get breaks with their figures. Uh, knock on wood. <laughs> Watch, my next one is broken. Sometimes you get a QC issue here and there, but it's not horrible. You know what I mean? Or, or it's not uh, consistent. Like, we don't constantly keep seeing it, you know what I mean? But but uh, SH Figure Arts and Monster Arts, very fun figures. A lot of fun to pose around. Most of the time, their MCU stuff, most of their figures have really bad articulation. Uh, besides, like, their Iron Man and Spider-Man figures, but, like, Bucky, Captain America, characters like that really don't have that good articulation. Their Thanos wasn't too bad. Uh, Black Panther was okay. Their Thor is horrible with articulation. So it, it, it depends on the character, I guess. Like their Dragon Ball stuff, 90% of them have awesome articulation and they're super fun to pose around. I should have had a Dragon Ball figure up here, actually, instead of Darth Maul. Darth Maul is just sitting on the shelf, so I picked him up. Darth Maul. But... Their Dragon Ball line, which is behind me here, some of their funnest figures. I think this is their best line, too. Whenever I get a Dragon Ball figure, I, it's always a lot of fun posing, posing them around. Uh, and, and the accessories, they do skimp out on accessories compared to like when they first started off. They used to really hook it up with accessories, but Lately, they don't do that as much, which is pretty disappointing. Some figures still get some uh, pretty good accessories, but then you have others who just have one interchangeable uh, head sculpt or face, and then they just have alternate hands, and it's like, what the hell is that all about, man? So, we definitely like to see uh, more accessories added into their line. Like Darth Maul has two interchangeable heads, interchangeable hands, then you get his, uh, his lightsaber, and you can remove the lightsaber blades as well. An alternate head sculpt definitely could have been good, but, I mean, what else could you have really included with them, you know what I mean? So, they could have included, like, uh, some force-using hands with them, which they did not. But, I would like to see them uh, include uh, more accessories more often. But usually, they do hook it up with a good amount, so you could still get some pretty good uh, uh, display options with your figures. And then, like I said, they're posing... Most of the time is pretty good, but you, then you have figures that, that have some bad articulations. So that is my number three. Now, coming in at number two. All right, so if you would have asked me this maybe like three, maybe four years ago, this company wouldn't have even made this list. And 
recently over the past year or two they've they've for me overtaken sh fig yards they have gotten better but the there's still issues with breaks with them not as bad as it was when they first started but they were a new company then they did get better i mean you guys can probably guess who who i'm talking about and that is mafex these figures, I love these figures. They, they're they're so good with accuracy, which is something Tamashu Nations is not always on point with. Like when they make a movie character, there's some stuff that isn't accurate, but then you get Mafex and it's completely accurate to the movie character. Or uh, accessories, like figure arts. You don't get as much accessories with a figure while Mafex hooks it the hell up. They They give you too many accessories which i love the more accessories the better and the more the more fun a figure will be the only weird thing about this deadpool they didn't give him guns but they gave him trigger finger hands which was odd but yeah mafex really does hook it up with accessories and they have proper articulation on a figure you can get these these figures in excellent poses to me, they have some of my favorite articulation on a figure. It doesn't break up the body too much. Like how Rebel Tech or uh, Amazing Yamaguchi, sometimes their joints break up like their shoulders, which is kind of like what Figma does as well. Mafex does not do that. They, they, they don't break it up to where it looks ugly. The articulation, you have all the points that you look for in a figure and you get very nice movement most of the time out of their figures. So the, the, the posing options are great with their figures. Then on top of that, you get the accessories. Now with Mezco, as I said, it's their accessories that mostly make their figures fun. Mafex has the accessories and the articulation. So they got the two. And then, as I said, the accuracy, the detail is also really well done on their figures as well. That's another thing I love about Mafex. Their detail is, is outstanding. They do such a great job with that. I mean, here and there, you might see a mess up here and there. I mean, that's pretty much with all companies, but Mafex's main thing is they, they need better quality plastic for their wrist joints, mainly. That's really the only issues where I've had breaks of more recent. Back years ago, I would have breaks all over the place with their figures. So Mafex, definitely uh, uh, number two on my list. I was going to put them at number one, but... I think another company deserved it. So that is number two. Whoops. Don't bend too much knee or you won't be able to stand properly. Look at that. I rhymed. All right. So that was my number two. Now coming in at number one. All right. So number one here, they've been around, what, a couple of years, a few years, maybe three years or something like that. They're still kind of new and they started off way better compared to Mafex when they were new. And they're very similar to how Mafex is with detail, articulation, and accessories and that is storm collectibles i love these figures yeah they're they're not true 1 12th scale figures they're a little bit larger in scale not too much larger they're more around like the seven inch line like NECA or mcfarland toys but damn he's got dust on him too geez i need to start getting a small duster and dusting my figures but storm collectibles uh to me they were a, a new fresh take on figures and and i i love what they do their detail is awesome they put shading or, or wash on their figures like with cyrax here you can see all throughout his yellow armor there is a wash all throughout it which is something sh figure arts skims out on a lot or shading that's something i don't like about figure arts that's why they only came in at number three so their detail really awesome Sometimes you might get a paint issue here or there, but not too much. And then they use a rubbery upper torso. So if they paint around the neck, if you articulate the neck a lot, like with my Shao Kahn, uh, the chips of paint will sometimes come off. So that is an issue right there. But besides that, the detail, just like with Mafex, is on point most of the time. Uh, articulation, awesome with these figures. I have so much fun posing these figures around. You get such great articulation with them. And just like with Mafex, the posing sessions with them, like I said, I, I have a blast posing them around and then posing them with the other figures. So much fun, man. 
And then the accessories, another thing, just like with Mafex, they hook it up with accessories and they keep getting better and better with effects that they include with their figures. They just keep getting more awesome and awesome as they, they go along as a company. So Storm Collectibles, it's like they keep advancing, you know? So they, they keep getting better as they go along. That's why I put them at number one. They're, they're, they're an all-around great figure. Detail, articulation, and accessories. You, you, you get a bunch of awesomeness in a figure, and this is how figures should be. You shouldn't get mad when you get skimped out on accessories or breaks. I don't think I've ever had a break with any of these figures. Yeah, I don't, I don't recall ever have... Oh, I did have one break, but it was my fault because I kept forcing their ankle joint to try to swivel, and they don't swivel. And I ended up breaking it, but that was my fault, so I will take the rap for that one. <laughs> but, yeah, man, the, the, these figures are, are a lot of fun. The only thing with Storm Collectibles, I'm not the biggest gamer, but they still do make gaming characters that I love. I wish they would explore, like, anime or and stuff like that, which it looks like they're starting to, so... Now they're they're not just doing gaming stuff, but that they're moving on now into some anime, which I'm really happy that they are. But yeah, man, I definitely had to throw them at number one. Storm Collectibles and Mefex are the... I look forward to their figures the most when they release. Even if it's not like a favorite character of mine, I'm, I'm just really hyped for them. With figure arts, like I just got Gamora and I'm like, alright, pretty cool. Like I don't really care too much, you know what I mean? Same... Certain Mezco figures I do get hyped for, and then Amazing Yamaguchi, I, I can get hyped hype for, but depending on the character. With May Mayfax and Storm Collectibles, I'm hyped with whichever uh, character they're releasing, like I said, even if it's not a favorite character of mine. So, yeah, man, that is who I think are some of the best figure companies out as of right now, the, the top five best companies. I hope all of you enjoyed this video. Be sure to let me know in the comments below who are your top five favorite figure companies or who do you, or who you think are the top five best figure companies around as right now. Hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you on the next one on Daredevil 19. Poke.